All right, everyone, I'm back working on the sawmill again. Doing a little bit of milling, a little drilling, a little grinding, whatever, and punching. And, and then uh, what else did I do over here? Oh, yeah, put a little bit of bending on the bender. So trying to uh, put together the final, where the pulley's gonna go on this thing and kind of the belt clutch type of deal here. So this is what I got going right now. Well, you kind of saw this part here on the last video. And then I added down here, added this pulley, a second little jack shaft. Let me take you around into here. I don't know, it's kind of dark in there. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little jack shaft in here. Braces going up there. Eh, it's kind of a weird deal, but it is what it is. And this is one of those deals where I'm going to have a little bit of interference with this thing here and the belt. So I probably, I'm going to have to cut out a little bit here and kind of modify on the back side of this square tubing. So not too worried about that. And then I'm working on my mechanism here for um, engaging, disengaging the, uh, the belt. So I'm kind of using a belt clutch system like that. Got that in place, did a little bit of milling and drilling to make this piece here. You can see where I milled out those slots here so I can move this thing back and forth. And then, uh, you know, I'm just using the advantage of being able to bend metal like this on my press. Bent this up, this will give it more rigidity, otherwise these bearings would be kind of, you know, flopping over the edge, right? So that'll give this a ton more rigidity. And then I've got this. I've got to shorten this a little bit, pop to 5 8 hole in there. And that will be going on these things here. And of course, these got to be modified so they can be wider. All right, so that is kind of where I'm at. And I'm going to continue on here. Hopefully this gets, gets something uh, accomplished here. Okay, so last time in the comments, somebody asked how I drove the uh, thread, the threaded rods up and down these things here, okay? And I'll just show you real quick. There's my hydraulic motor right there, okay? And then I just have these little gearboxes right here, okay? There's a gearbox there, and you go and follow the shaft over here, there's a gearbox right there, and that drives the uprights, okay? Pretty simple. And why do I have gearboxes? Because I got them for free. <laughs> and I got the shafts for free, and I got the threaded rod for free. So that's why it is what it is. If uh, you know I had to buy this stuff, then maybe it would be something different. Originally, I was thinking about using um, you know chain up there, just like everybody else does. But I happened to get these things, and uh, that's why I have done what I've done. And as far as bearings, I just have some heavy bearings on the top there, top over there. And let's just look down at the bottom here. Um, I don't know if you can see that down there. That's all it is. Heavy bearings for free. So that's what, that's what uh, holds her going up and down. It's not really a thrust bearing per se. In fact, when I was doing this modification, I was, uh, I bought some thrust bearing stuff and I I thought I was going to uh, put that in there and I started fiddling around with it and decided that, nah, forget it, these bearings are, <laughs> it's probably going to last me forever. So, and, uh, you know, worse comes to worse, I can order more of them and, well, I don't know, they don't seem like they're too wimpy, so they're uh, pretty strong actually. Anyway, that's it for that. All right. So, I'm in the middle of it here. Don't know where I'm at. Anyhow, <laughs> uh, I bought a, a uh, power takeoff shaft, and I cut that down. So I'm going to use that to drive the band wheel. One of these three ways this thing fits together here somehow. I don't remember which way it is. Like that, I think. Um, cut that thing down, made it really short because I don't have a lot of space. And even so, I wish this thing was was uh, not quite as long as it 
as it is, but not sure what to do about that. I think I'll make it. By hook or by crook, this thing is going to fit in there. Um, then I did a bunch of milling and drilling and so on to get all this to fit together and the pulley to fit on and the uh, uh, key stock to go in, milled that slot out, took my other jack shaft, milled slots in here, milled a slot in here. Um, then I bought a adapter, a PTO adapter, and put a lathe, lathe the end of it down and bored this out so this PTO adapter fits in there. So right now I'm at the point where I need to weld this onto this here to make that solid. It's a tight fit, not going anywhere. Had to pound it in hard, but um, it still needs to be welded, obviously. So that's where I'm at right there. Let me show you outside. I think I'm getting toward a wrap-up of this video, which has been very convoluted, I believe. <laughs> uh, this is what I ended up doing to actually drive the band wheel over here. And you can see I just put my um, shaft in with the hub mounted on it in here for now, just to mock it up. Um, so this is, you know, just a regular old PTO shaft that I cut down, like I said. Um, actually ended up to be I could lengthen this piece out just a little bit I, I've got more of this so I could remake it and lengthen it out and probably get a little bit more out of there in case this seems like it's too sloppy well PTO shafts where I come from old ones on the farm are always sloppy anyway so I'm not overly worried about that but the nice thing about this setup here is that one I can kind of move the band wheel and I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, pulleys being aligned here. So this pulley will always be aligned with this pulley up here. And we can move this thing however it needs to be adjusted back, forth, up, down, whatever. And, you know, there's some forgiveness there. So, and this thing comes off. If I can do it one-handed. Uh, maybe. Okay, that comes off like that. All right. That whole thing just comes apart like that set the there and that will allow me to get this belt off of these two pulleys here and change the belt because I can obviously have to get it over that shaft there so that actually makes that easy easy squeezy um, and I got this welded in there nobody looked too close at my weld all right then I've got uh, belt tensioners here. This one, air cylinder, of course, there. And it's going to push um, outward to tension that belt and kind of act as a belt clutch. This is just for mock up right now. That'll be changed, obviously. It needs to be for three belts wide. Uh, this one also just kind of in here as a mock up, but got the old air cylinders going right here. So. This, if you can see it right there, is going to go like that from underneath and tension that belt like so. Um, and two air cylinders because I didn't know if one was going to be quite enough tension on those on those two belts there. You can always regulate it down. That's what we've got regulators for. Um, yeah, so you can see my, you know, my jack shaft set up there, my jack shaft set up down in here which hopefully isn't too dark and all of this got all of this stuff kind of tacked on here now um, just need to finish getting the motor all centered up um, on the or on this plate here and then getting the plate uh, drilled in or you know holes set here for where this is going to drill and I think I'll just drill that plate actually um, and set that set that in there like so probably add another brace I don't know maybe not underneath here but maybe from over across here another brace that comes across to kind of stabilize this out because this is still a little wiggly woggly here and I don't really like that I want that to be um, yeah a little bit more stable especially when that motor gets running this thing will bounce like crazy 
and we don't want things bouncing apart. So that's about that. Okay, um, yeah, it's about a wrap. Let me show you the front side of it because I think I haven't really done that. Um, so you can see what it looks like from the front here. Um, so while I'm thinking about it, I know somebody asked a question about how in the world you get the band out of the thing. Well, the tire, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see over here, but the wheel sticks out beyond, okay? And right now I've got these things here on. These are going to get cut off. These bottom pieces are going to get cut off. So really there's a clear shot coming straight out here, all right? And the wheel is will be down below this thing. So this is going to be put on the back side. These things here were for my... Um, my guides, my blade guides, and because of how one side ended up being kind of bindy and the other side didn't, I ended up turning everything around from what I wanted it to be, and that's just life in the big city, I guess. So, um, yeah, these get trimmed off, and then the blade comes out at the bottom, will come out at the bottom, and... Um, first and then kind of flip up through the top. These things here, which are notched right here, just kind of loosen up and come out of the way. And I'm actually going to flip these around too. They're supposed to be so the handle side is over here. And all three of those flip out of the way. And you can see there's just a clear shot. You know, the blade goes above all of this stuff right here. Okay, it rides above all that junk. And there's a clear shot above that. And so that's how that's going to come come out. Should work uh, easy squeezy, I hope. And for some reason it don't well, then it'll probably be, you know, like maybe a little bit of trimming or something right here to uh, to get the job done. But otherwise it should be it should be good. But anyway, I thought I'd back up here and you can take a shot. Um, this was not going to be a super huge mill, but it should be capable of cutting something at up to 49 inches wide when it's done so that's between the uprights yeah so that's about a wrap for the mill thank you again for watching we will see you on the next video